Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's your brother Gabriel Romani from mytestgal.com. We are taking your questions. And our program is a program that fights against pornography, the weakness that pornography brings to both brothers and sisters. We have an amazing project. Please check out our website. Today we're taking a question from a brother. He says, I, I, I'm a Pakistani brother growing up. All I thought that women are not important. I'm a man and need to keep them under control as a wife. She should produce children, cook and clean. That's it. As I've started, it's a good question. I can see already where are we going. He says, I started practicing the deen. I've read many hadith and surah nisa that say otherwise. I know as a man, I am the imam of the house, but what I was taught in my culture is wrong. How do I explain this to elders who are hardcore cultural? The fact that women's roles are to cook, to clean, to take care of the house, to nurture, to nurture human soul, to teach them the deen. This is a beautiful thing. We shouldn't look at it as a negative thing. And that we have to establish first and foremost, we should never, women should never be ashamed. Actually, they were proud of taking care of these chores in the family. They were extremely proud. It's only when competing ideologies and philosophies bled into the ummah and they were propaganda was very strong. Women were convinced that what they've done was basically wasting their time, that they were at loss and they wasted so much of their youth. The seed of doubt was planted by these competing non-Islamic philosophies. And now she is so toxic in portraying this negative experience of the past to her daughters and her sons that they themselves will be affected and move away from Islam and away from the correct understanding. So that's the first thing we have to understand. We have to establish that a woman should be proud of her household, the work that she does, even though the West is trying to make her feel like this is a loss or this is a waste or this is something shameful. She should be proud. She should stand against this kind of thought and teach other women and daughters the example that they should follow and that they have a huge responsibility in doing so. Having said this, the cultural approaches where the negative, I'm not denying that these things exist, where men literally treat women like slaves. They are rude. They are condescending. They are so bad when it comes to, you know, how they deal with women. So that definitely this can be traumatizing. If a man is being kind to his wife, if a man is supporting her, if a man is praising her for what she is doing, then obviously she's going to be more encouraged in her household, in her tarbiyah and what she does. There's a huge difference between someone like that. She's going to be proud in cooking. He's going to praise her for cooking and praise her for her beauty and praise her for the things that she's done. So she'll be very, very encouraged and very happy to do those things. But when a man is just talking in a condescending way, he is rude to her. He is denying her her basic rights. He doesn't love her. He's abusing her verbally, physically. Then of course she's going to hate her position. Adding to that the propaganda of the West, highlighting these things that look, you're wasting your time. This man doesn't even you know, recognize your efforts. He doesn't praise you. She's going to no doubt have these thoughts, these negative thoughts towards the culture, towards men in general towards Islam. A lot of women blame Islam because of this. And as the brother said, growing up, the young men will see their fathers and their grandfathers and their uncles talking down upon the women. Hey, woman, go this, go that. Ugh. No kindness, no softness, no love, no rifq, as the Prophet ﷺ said. No, um, you know, recognizing the contribution and the huge amana that they have, the women have to the family. Of course, there is going to be trauma. And of course, the boys are going to believe that this is the way I need to treat my future wife. Not just that. They start treating their own mother and sisters like that. And fathers say nothing. How many cases where the boys in the family are swearing at the mother, are calling her, A'udhu Billah, you cannot even imagine the words that they're calling the woman that has given him birth. The woman that the Prophet ﷺ said, in yeah, the hadith is, inshallah, in the meaning, authentic. That Jannah is at her feet. You know what I mean? How many times the mother has been praised and raised in praise 
by the Prophet Sallallahu how many times the importance of the woman has been highlighted in the hadith. How many times we talked about this. But these boys look at their examples around them and see these not men, sorry, they're quasi-men, pseudo-men, fake men, who talk down and talk in this dirty manner, this disrespectful manner to the women that gave them birth and gave their children birth. Yes, you got to be the leader and the imam, as the brother said. You have to lead your females, your women, you have to protect them. But at the same time, you have to respect them, you have to love them, you have to cherish their hard work and what they do, and you have to highlight it and verbalize it. We preach that the woman's position is here, under the men, behind the men, supporting the men, and the man is the leader. However, we also preach that the man is the protector, provider, respecting, loving, taking care, praising her, recognizing her contribution, Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.